Hello, I'm Adam Walker, and I'd like to begin my talk today by talking about the food industry that we have here in the United States. Now, our food industry is really characterized by the fact that our food travels a really long ways to get to us before we can eat it. In fact, the average American dinner will travel over 1,500 miles to get to, and that's a really big distance that transcends mountains and international borders and oceans, and this distance builds a lack of knowledge because when you're far away from something, you don't really know a lot about it. And this lack of knowledge begins to narrow our minds. And when our minds are narrowed, they form habits, especially when we're really young because that's when most habits form, below the age of five. And our habits today are focused on eating the most processed foods and sugary foods that we have. And it's all over the place and it's constant and it's very difficult to break. Now, the narrowing of our minds conversely leads to the expanding of our stomachs. In the past 30 years, the American obesity rate has gone up extraordinarily. And now, the obesity rate is over 34%. And together with obesity and overweight, the percent is over 69%. And in young adults, it's bad too. This leads to increasing healthcare costs and increasing uh, death rates, which are both detrimental to a society, but also increasing apathy. We like to pretend that we care about the obesity epidemic, but it's hard to actually prove it because we're all so ingrained in our habits, which is where I get to education. I think that education is the best way to break us of our habits and form new ones especially when you start really young. So that further leads me to this class here at UPREP called Sustainable Living. Now, don't get me wrong because that's a really big topic. It's basically organic gardening. And we have nine garden boxes and over 20 native plants that we take care of in this class. We um, learn when and where to plant plants, how much water to give them, and all that fun stuff. But this class also gives us some other benefits, like the basic physical benefits. The food is local, it's at our school, it's pretty local, it's right there. Um, it's vegetables, we're growing a lot of fruits and vegetables, we're not growing you know, sugar, hamburgers, things like that. We're growing healthy food. And when you grow vegetables, you're more likely to eat vegetables, and when you eat vegetables, you're more likely to be healthy. So, when you grow vegetables, you're more likely to be healthy. So, in general, what we're growing is what I like to call slow food, as opposed to the famous fast food we all know of. So, yeah. Um, gardening also teaches several other things. Uh, independence, teamwork, and responsibility. Independence and teamwork are two sides of the same coin, because we work on our own to work in our area on our plants, and they make it really nice, and it's up to us to keep them up. But it's also the teamwork, the team effort of everyone in the class to keep the garden looking really nice. And our responsibility is also really emphasized in this class because when you're taking care of a plant, when that plant dies, that plant is dead and that's it. And I think that that could be a really sobering or eye-opening experience for a student to realize that they have that much influence and sometimes they have to take responsibility for what they want to do. There are several types of growth that uh, take place in this class. The main one, the obvious one, is the plant growth. The plant grows from a little seed up to a big plant. But it's not just the plant growing, because plants face a lot of problems when they grow. For example, it starts underneath the ground. There's a major setback right there. It has to grow through the soil before it can get anywhere. And then it freezes. And it sets it back another week. And then it grows some more, and then a deer eats it, or something because there's always something. Nature doesn't really prefer life. It's a terrible place. <laughs> Plants face all sorts of problems, and not only will they survive if you give them basic nutrients, a plant will always survive if you give it its basic needs, food or soil, water, and sunlight. But it's only when you really care for a plant and show it love that a plant will thrive and really live. So the second type of growth is personal growth, because there's a fundamental connection between plant and human growth. So in the same way that plants go through a lot of adversity, people do as well. And it starts in school, 
because there's a lot of bad things that happen in school. There's all sorts of things, there's cliques, boyfriends, girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, tests, ACT, PSAT, SAT, AP, GPAs, colleges, there's a lot of setbacks in school. And when a student gardens, they can see this, that they're not the only ones going through problems. Even the smallest plants that we take for granted every day go through immense difficulties just to live life. And I think that a student can really see that and respond to that. And furthermore, just like a plant will survive if you give it its basic nutrients, so will a person. If you give a person food, water, and facilities, they'll survive. But it's only when a person cares for or is cared for or loves or is loved that they really experience life and thrive. And then the third level of growth is community growth. Because we all know when one person is happy, the people around them are happy and healthy. And the people around them, in the school, the city, the state, the country, the world. <laughs> and there's all sorts of things that can improve a community. There's growing up Green Charter School in New York that is improving its community by reaching out to young people and getting them hooked on gardening. Uh, um, that it really teaches them responsibility and how to be healthy and happy. So to end on a personal note, these are my peppers. They're mine. I love them and care for them. And it may be weird to think that I love a plant, but I do. They're mine. And if it weren't for taking this class, I would never have been able to grow them from a tiny seed. I wouldn't have known how. So that's why I think that gardening classes should be, everyone should take a gardening class. They should be required, maybe. Because everyone deserves a chance to have this fundamental human experience that is gardening. Thank you.